Hello, Tuna Pogaluga here. If you're a new player who wants to get into the wild, wacky world of competitive Yokai Watch 2, this video is for you. And even if you're an experienced player, you can probably learn a lot from this video, especially in the first few parts. So, without further delay, let's get straight into it. There are going to be three segments of this video. Roles, team archetypes, and steps to team building. And I'll be walking you guys through it while building a team myself, so you can see the process in action. But before I even start, I need to clarify some things. If you are completely new and have no idea what the metagame is like, do not start team building. Well, then how are you going to start team building? Watch stuff, ask around, and play the metagame first. Sample teams are also a great tool to let you have a look and try out what a coherent team feels like. If you try the standard metagame, OU, you can probably try the lower tiers as well, and I've done my best to make sure this video and its principles are pretty universal for whichever metagame you're gonna hop into in Yokai Watch 2. On to roles. As main roles, there are attackers, support, tanks, and healers. And for this category of attackers, we have physical attackers, spirit, magic attackers, mages, and DSS, dedicated salt spammers. Your physical and magic attackers are most of the time your main attackers, and dedicated salt spammers basically stay in the back until their salt is ready to be unleashed. Then we have support, where there are debuffers such as Boohoo, Confuse, Grumples, Terrapada to inspirit the enemy for soul, and buffers such as Dumbcap Early or Nyan, which inspirit your yokai with big boosts. Then we have tanks, which soak up the damage that would otherwise go straight to your attackers if you didn't have them. There are two types of tanks, sponge tanks and damage tanks. The names for these categories are loose, but basically sponge tanks are tanks that just tank for the most part, and damage tanks are tanks that do more than tanking in an offensive way. The prime example for these two subcategories are Orkanos as the premier sponge tank and Total Dude as a damage tank. Now, when I say these categories are loose, I mean they are actually quite loose. Mr. Sandman and Ronek are categorized as sponge tanks because they don't really do anything offensively, but they can heal, so um, sponge tanks for them, I guess. Now, healers are the last and weakest main role by far. Now, healers are the worst role because of one thing, passive healing. One of the biggest misconceptions about team building and like teams in Yokai Watch 2 is that you need a healer. You do not always need a healer, but most of the time you do need healing. That is in the form of the adjacent healing soul, or AHS. Nurse Tungus, Auntie Heart, and Elder Bloom all have the same effect, and that's healing adjacent yokai by 2% of their HP every turn. And it's very good, because it can stack. So if you have 2 AHS, that's 4% for your adjacent yokai every turn. It's really good, because after one cycle, that's already 24%. And if you have a Legly, which heals 1% to every yokai in the front, and she's holding 2 AHS, that's 30% every cycle to adjacent yokai. Now, healers aren't that bad. Elder Bloom is obviously goaded, but in more offensive teams, you really don't need to waste a slot for a dedicated healer, because anything with two item slots can hold two AHS, like Boohoo. Now, with rolls out of the way, we can jump straight into team archetypes. I know this is a lot before we actually get to team building, but you really need to know all of this before you start. Stall? Balance, Offense, and Hyper Offense are the main four team archetypes. Now, I'm gonna start with the ones that are pretty clear-cut in their definition, and that's Stall and Hyper Offense. Stall is the bulkiest and most passive playstyle, with your whole team being bulk and using strategies to deny other teams from breaking it. Stall achieves wins by walling the opponent and chipping down their team, typically waiting for Sudden Death, also known as Inferno Time, to win with more yokai being alive on the Stall team. Stall teams will frequently face matchups where it can't do any meaningful damage against the opponent, but in these matchups, the hope is that the opponent can't break your stall team either, and yours is designed to last the longest to get more yokai alive on the stall team in sudden death. An excellent example of stall is my own stall team, which I used in the last North American European tournament before Nintendo Online Services for Yokai Watch 2 shut down. You can check that video out. There's also a subcategory of stall called semi-stall, which is basically stall until you can use a powerful DSS. The best example is the infamous Castellius 1, Orkanos, Toll Dude, Isaur, semi-stall team. And now for hyper-offense. Hyper-offense is 
well, it's hyper offense, and it aims to break down a section of the enemy team as fast as possible before they can react with offense that causes critical damage to the team. Usually, hyper offense teams are really frail, and, well, you gotta basically act faster than the opponent to win. You achieve wins with hyper offense by breaking the opponent's teams by just the sheer amount of damage you can do on specific parts of the team, like with the Jabanyan S team, the Jabanyan S boy club, the Jabanyan S team, you aim to break down the opponent's offense before they can do any damage to you because that team is frail as hell. And the, of course, infamous Shogun Yun Burly Guard Team, and they try to break down the enemy's defenses so that it can clean up easily. Those are the more fixed archetypes. Now, for balance and offense. Let me cook now. The general game plan of balance and offense is to use bulkier yokai to enable more offensive yokai to break and win. The main difference is where balance would emphasize a defensive core that isn't afraid of losing offensive firepower, offense would focus more on a capable offensive core, relying more about momentum. Let's start with balance. Balance is a mix between a defensive core and offensive breakers. Balance achieves wins with longevity and at the same time the threat of offensive pressure in the back. Attackers are able to break because they have natural bulk or the tanks themselves actually have good offensive capabilities. Balance promotes more of the long game with solid tanks, checks, and counters, and losing offensive firepower for balance is not that important. The Unfairy team is one of the most infamous Yokai Watch 2 competitive teams of all time, and in my opinion, it is the greatest example of balance. Alright, offense. Offense is a mix between a offensive core and solid defense. Offense achieves wins by not necessarily overpowering the opponent like Hyper Offense, but overwhelming the opponent with many offensive yokai. Offense tries to end the game sooner than later, and it rides off of momentum to win, threatening opposing offensive yokai with its own offensive pressure, aiming to break the enemy team before being broken itself. Tanks, checks, and counters don't need to be that solid in this team archetype, but they do need to do their job at least a few times. Something I want to clarify before we continue is that there isn't really a solid line between balance and offense in Yoko Watch 2. It really is a more gradual scale. Do you want to be more bulky or do you want to be more offensive? That's basically it. It's basically your normal teams that you see. Seven minutes in and we finally get to team building. The first step of team building is to pick a yokai or strategy to build around. If you do not have a strategy in mind, you should pick any yokai that you would want a team to be built around. If you don't have a strategy, it's best to pick a team with a attacker. So mage, physical attacker, or assault spammer. You can start with support yokai, but in my opinion, the process of building a team is much easier if you pick a more offensive yokai if you do not have a strategy. I'm gonna pick Unpleasant. I actually was thinking of who to pick for this video, and I was trying to think of an underappreciated attacker that isn't overpowered in the meta, but honestly, so many new players just gloss over Unpleasant like he's actually broken, so use him? Like, actually, look at his stats. Wicked Elites have the highest stat totals in the game rivaling the friend form Odeo Kai, but most of them have poor stat spreads and really bad kits like Untidy. But Unpleasant here was given a great stat spread. Sure, he doesn't have an item, but his stats and excellent kit make up for it. Step 2 is to pick a playstyle, and it's pretty obvious what I'm about to pick. It's offense. Unpleasant is a really offensive attacker, and I think I can support that with even more offense. So yeah, offense it is. Step 3 is to build your core first and pick supporting yokai. So make your main strategy if you don't already have a strategy in mind. So don't pick tanks if you're an offense team at this stage, just give yourself a mental note for tanks. If you're a balanced team, then maybe build your defensive core first, you know, stuff like that. It's also best to keep tribe unity in mind because tribe unity is pretty important. Unless you are eerie or shady, those tribe unities suck so much it's not even funny. This step is pretty hard because it's easy to just look at a top yokai and slap it on your team like, oh, Shogun Yun is good, so I'll just put him on the team, right? This is not how you want to think. You need to make sure you're supporting yokai have synergy with your main yokai. Another huge misconception about team building is that there are like teams that you have to like build in this specific order like an attacker in center, then a debuffer, then a buffer on both sides, and then next to those supports are tanks, so you can like always have a tank when you rotate, and then have a healer in the middle of those two tanks so they get healed. I mean, if you are building a team and you want that kind of structure and end up with it, then good for you, 
right? But you really should not build a team with like already a mold in mind like that example because it just screws up the building process and then you get teams that look exactly the same i mean you can drop wins on them but like other players know how to counter your strategies and also it's if you build with a mold then you can never really customize your team with things like checks counters so don't build with a mold. Oh, with that tangent done, back to team building. Now, I have Unpleasant as my main yokai, and I need to pick supporting yokai. And Boohoo and Dumbcap are both yokai that honestly seem like no-brainers. It's actually been a while since I've used Boohoo as well, so why not put him on the team? He is one of the best yokai in the meta, after all. Putting immediate pressure on the opponent with that negative spirit and fast-charging ultimate, getting off opportunities for pokes at the start of the game and consistently throughout it, Boohoo is truly exceptional. And Dumbcap. Dumbcap is gonna be here to boost my Unpleasant and possibly another attacker, because this is an offense team, right? Dumbcap is the best booster in the game, in my opinion, with his Inspirit being a 40% increase to Spirit stats and Mysterious Unity and double item slots. This guy's great. I'm gonna put this guy next to Unpleasant, and I'll worry about the items on him later. For support yokai that have two slots, if you don't immediately have a flow to the next step of the team building process, it's best not to put items at this stage. I mean, you can always put items and change them later, but anyways. Step three is to pick additional yokai that complement your core. In this case, I'm making an offense team, and I don't want Unpleasant to be the only attacker in wind condition on my team. So, I'm gonna add Dragon as a nuker next to Dumbcap, and I think Dragon can benefit from the Smug Mellow Souls that I'll put on Dumbcap right now. See, I just put items on my yokai now. Anyways, Dragon is a very powerful nuker, but that's the only thing he does because he has the waiting skill, and so he basically can't attack, so he's always relying on his ultimate to deal damage, and we don't want that ultimate to miss, right? So why not put another attacker in the form of Eterna? Intercactus, I mean Eterna, will give much needed bulk to the team and will give Dragon that no miss ultimate because of oldness zone. And she has a pretty powerful ultimate as well. Step four is to pick basic requirements for teams such as support yokai or items in the back with two slots like Legly, for example, to Mel Souls or HS Souls. Right now, I am missing one big thing, a tank. Every offense team, or almost any team in general, needs at least one tank. I'll use Wrong Neck, because I don't want to be inspirited by enemy yokai and be forced to play defensively. I want my breakers to immediately do damage, right? This is an offense team. And since Wrong Neck has inspirit defense being a wicked yokai, I think she's the best pick. She'll basically just be there to keep momentum, and she can die off in like the mid game because, well, she did her job in the beginning, and that's all we need. The momentum of offense will hopefully make progress that Wrong Neck isn't needed in the mid game to late game stage of a battle. And step five is to pick items. Now, for Wrong Neck, it's obvious, Stinging Soul. Dragon is obvious, it's GRD, the Greasel or Robo Draggy Soul, and Cursed Staff. We already have items on Dumb Cap, which is the two Smugamala Souls, so now all we need is items on Eterna and Boohoo, since Unpleasant cannot hold an item. Now, we have no healing on this team except Wrong Neck, but she will probably ever get off, like, one move. And since Unpleasant has high bulk, I'm pretty sure he can take one or two unboosted hits. So, I'm gonna put two AHS Souls on Boohoo, and that'll heal my Unpleasant and Wrong Neck, so I can keep them alive for that little bit longer. And now, I need to put items on Eterna. Now, Eterna is pretty bulky, and I've always used one item with Eterna, and that's the Shielding Soul. So even if Unpleasant and Dragon die, I still have a chance because of Eterna's bulk. The team is super frail right now, and I think it'll help out a lot. And that's all the yokai with all their items. While we're on items, I just need to clarify some things because there are some big misconceptions with new players. New players just slap on like a random item, and it just does not work. You really need items in Yokai Watch 2 comp. Like, in Yokai Watch 2 in general, item slots are so important. Items are very important because these souls are, like, they're broken. Like the AHS soul, the GRD soul, they're really, really good. They just bring so much more utility and so many more options to the game. That's why two slot item yokai are so good. Please choose your items correctly. Items really do depend on your team and what it's trying to accomplish, but for some yokai, like the dragon on my team, 
it's like always GRD and a cursed staff like every single time if it's a DSS. So yeah, I can't really go in deep with items in this video, but you can always ask around with other people. Also, there aren't a lot of viable items. There are like 10 to 15, I think, that are actually viable. And yeah, another thing about items is that it depends on your team, but stat boosting items aren't that good. Do not put them on like every single yokai. It's It doesn't have the utility that souls have. Back to team building. Now the team is done, but you have to figure out what do you lose to, what do you win to. So what does this unpleasant team win or lose against? Well, I think this team is going to struggle against brave spam hyper offense, because for those types of teams, they don't necessarily rely on negative in spirits to spam sultimates, just big damage to oko your aokai. It's definitely a hard matchup, but I do have Dragon, Eterna to potentially threaten an Oko and Shogunyun. Also, I'm gonna probably be slightly weak to teams that just buff one yokai like a Snarl and only use that one yokai to try to win because those teams tend to do a lot of damage and, well, my team is pretty frail, but I think we can win with momentum. Stall is kind of a mixed bag for this team, as, well, I can threaten Okos against Daze and Confuse because I have Eterna, but at the same time, Stall is basically slippery spam, so I can't get those negative in spirits off with this team. Against balance and offense, I think this is a pretty neutral matchup, unless they have some counters like Scarasol. Scarasol will be hard for this team, as it is a spirit attacking team, but, well, Scarasol can't reflect Sultimates, so we can just use that against Scarasol, and it cannot reflect in spirits as well. So we can also use that against Scarasol to keep charging those, those Sultimates and get that momentum going. And the last step of team building is actually playing your team against other people. Speculation can only get your team so far, and even the most experienced players can be wrong. And lastly, do not misplace your expectations. If this team is so good, why isn't it winning for me? If a team is good, it doesn't mean that it's going to beat anything on a good matchup. The player has to know the meta and how to actually play. Nothing is ever an auto win especially in Yokai Watch where the creatures fight for you and you just control their movement and their ultimates and poking and stuff like that. I think this is the longest recording I've ever recorded, so um, hit that like subscribe button and do comment on what you want me to make in the future, like do you want me to make a how to item type of video, how to this, how to that, right? I'ight. See y'all pookies, later, bye.